I'm going to be showing you all the wild coloring stuff. So after we did duotone, hard edged and soft edged, then I did an offset layer behind that combined my line art with my coloring into one full layer. What that looks like on the gray background is just like this. And then I added effects to that base coat layer, which is a combination of my line art and my coloring. The effects are a color overlay that filled it all with white, but you can actually use any color overlay you want. You can fill it with gray, you can fill it with black, and then a stroke, which added to the edges, right? And that helped a lot. And then you can have a soft edged offset with outer glow and no stroke. Or you can have just a clean offset, which I tend to prefer, with no outer glow. Now, I'm going to make a copy of that base coat, and then I turn off all the effects on that copy except for a new one, which I add, which is gradient overlay. And gradient overlay gives me these options. Now, if I had it on normal mode, it would look like that but I can change the blending mode of it so that it blends in with my image. I can even do it in more extreme ways, right? It just depends how you want to play with full spectrum. And also I can, like I showed at the end of the last video, I can customize that exact gradient. You can also do things like this, lighter color or darker color, or exclusion. You can just do all kinds of crazy things to get something to work with for full spectrum. But the bottom line is full spectrum gives you multiple colors within each of your local colors. So I liked the soft light use and then now that that's at 100% as an effect, I am now going to right click and I am going to do what's called rasterizing that layer style. So that those colors are baked in now as a coloring option. Then I'm going to turn on my layers underneath, my flat color, my soft edge, my hard edge duotone. And then what I can do is I can fade it in. Right? Remember my black line arts on top. And I can decide how much of that full spectrum I want. The other thing I can do, which I love, is I can use adjustments not for levels, though I could do that. I could goose the highlights and darken the shadows with levels. But even more so with color balance. So if I think that the greens are going too yellow, I can just go to the highlights and push those more towards the blues, away from the greens, towards the cyans. I can take the shadows, push those more towards the blue, the cyans, and the magentas. Right? I can kind of find those full spectrum colors that really work for me. And in the midtones, maybe I push forward the reds. and the magentas. So there's a big difference there. Now what can I do? Well, I can use my eraser again, and I get to decide where I want those crazy color effects. Maybe I don't want them so much in the helmet, because the helmet gets very, very bright that way. But I still have a little bit of it. I still have a little bit of red in the bottom of the helmet. I like the red in the eye. I think that's cool. I like it in the feathers, but maybe not quite so much. So I'm going to tone that down. I really like it in the tail, but I don't like it in the base of the feet that much. Because I wanted to kind of sharpen that contrast still.
and you just kind of adjust it. So that's adding in full spectrum. And then maybe I want to lighten the eye a little bit. So that's about the most I can do with digital coloring within the sandwich with my black line on our top and my white bread on the bottom. And does this full spectrum color look good on white? Yes. Does it look good on gray? Yes. Does it look good on black? Yes. Especially with that offset. Now, one thing that can happen as you're coloring is you can get what are called these anti-alias lines between your fill. And that's just how the magic wand selects raster-based shapes. Because even though it's a vector, it's, it's being expressed, your line art's being expressed as a raster at this high resolution. I wouldn't worry about it too much because as we fill it in, that's all going to work out. But if you want to get rid of it, you can make an additional copy of your base coat. And instead of having it color overlay with white, you can have it color overlay with middle gray. Or something even darker than middle gray, if you like. I'm going to turn off the stroke on it, and then I'm going to set that and filter it and blur it out just a little bit, Gaussian blur. And you can see by doing that, it filled in all those anti-alias with just a little bit of gray. So that's how you can get rid of those pesky little anti-alias remnants. All right, next step. Saving your work. If you like the full spectrum, turn off all your backgrounds and then save it first as a PSD and then save it as a full spectrum PNG. So export as a PNG. I already exported my duotone color. So now I'm going to export it with a slightly different name. I'm going to call it full spectrum color. It still started with flat color and then duotone and now full spectrum is added. So this is all additive. And there that is. And if you want to load that into the assignment, you can. But you just have to pick your, your favorite finish. So I have hard edge duotone. Now I'm going to add my full spectrum color. And I haven't ever really seen full spectrum used where it's all hard edge. Usually full spectrum is used with soft edge. So this has both. All right. So I'm going to call this soft edge duotone. and full spectrum color. Because if I showed you these images on your final exam and asked you to say whether they were flat color, duotone soft edge, duotone hard edge, or full spectrum, this looks like duotone hard edge, right? This looks like full spectrum, and this looks like flat color. And I want you to be able to recognize that, even if you don't use it in your own work. Okay, the next step, whoops, once you've done full spectrum, the only thing left to do is to work on top of the sandwich. Your sandwich is stuffed. It's stuffed with everything you can do with digital coloring inside the line art. But now we can make it extra fancy by putting an olive and a toothpick and sticking it on top of the bread, right? So what we do is we can do color holds. What color holds do, I keep opening up that and I want to do this. Color holds is like this, this highlight that's on her bracelets. And you see how that affects all of the line art underneath. A color hold is what's used for Wonder Woman's lasso to make it glow. And it affects all the line art underneath. A color hold is what's used to replace the black line art for this crystal head that's being chopped off. So how do we replace that black line art with something else? Well, first of all, we ask, where do we want to replace it? Do I want to replace it everywhere? If I want to replace it everywhere, it's super simple. 
I just duplicate my black bread layer, my black line art, and just like I did the base color layer, I double click it to get layer styles, and I'm going to do a color overlay, and I'm going to choose the color that I swap the black for. So maybe I want like a dark blue. Or so you can see it a little bit better. More of a middle blue, right? And that's fine. And I think that works pretty well on the bird, but not so well on the beak or on the feet. So how can I change that? Well, what I do is select just the feet, this lasso around them. You're kind of cutting up your vector line art here, but it's all on a duplicate. So you're not going to have to rasterize it. And the beak. And we're talking about just the line art. I'm not worried about what's behind the line art. And then I'm going to duplicate that, Command-J. And because I'm duplicating a selection, it rasterizes it automatically. And then I go to Color Overlay, and instead of blue, I'm going to choose, you know, a brown or an orange. You can see it changing. And now I have a different color of the line art for the body than I do for the feet and the beak. But what if I'm not satisfied with just a simple color, color overlay? What if I want to fill it with a gradient? Let's do a normal gradient. I can have a rainbow beak, but what if I want something more subtle? Let's pick a pretty simple gradient, like a warm gradient like this, that then I modify a little bit so it's not so saturated I mean you just have so many options ridiculous So I want a gradation like this in these browns, okay? That looks pretty good. I can play with the angle of it. I want the beak to be lighter, right? So I'm going to put the light up there. There it is. And I can play with the scale of it. I can offset it. You know, just all these different games we can play. And if I want it to be darker than that, I can rasterize it and then duplicate it and set it on multiply. These are all special effects that go on top of your line art. And then, of course, I can play with opacity and really dial it in exactly where I want it. Okay, what other part of this line art might I not want to be outlined in blue? Well, this plumage, that seems like it should be outlined in green. So let me select that. And this is me doing a lot of extra work that you won't usually find on a cereal box. But it's so you, that you know about these techniques. So now I duplicate that, and now I'm going to change that color overlay to a darker green. Or I can do a gradient again. But this time, I'm going to shift the gradient. Actually, here's even faster. I'll keep the exact same gradient. But I'm going to rasterize the layer style and then go to Image Adjustment Hue Saturation, and I can change the hue of it to something more green, right? Or even, and I can light.